Welcome to online worship at Centenary United Methodist Church. We're glad you chose to be with us wherever you are. May you experience the presence of the risen Christ. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope you're well this morning. It's nice to see everybody welcome home. If you would uh, let us stand and open our service this morning and music, we've got some good songs for you today. This is called All We Sing.
seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Centenary United Methodist Church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's so good to see you this morning. And greetings to those who are following us online. Please silence your phone here at the beginning of the service. Make sure you read all the announcements in the bulletin today. There is a response card in your pew, a white card. If you want to put a prayer request and put it in the offering basket later, or if you want information about our church, you can put it in the basket as well and we'll get back to you. Or you can use the QR code on it and scan that information in using your phone. There will be a Stephen minister at the front at the conclusion of the service to pray for anyone who needs prayer. Uh, this coming Wednesday, we resume our Wednesday evening suppers. The United Methodist men are cooking for us at 5 o'clock Wednesday, so I hope you will be here for that. A week from Thursday on the 27th, we're having our annual preschool. They're one of their largest fundraisers, Art Feast, from 5 to 7. Tickets are $7 for a wonderful meal. And there's an insert in your bulletin about this. And uh, you have an opportunity to come and look at some of the wonderful art that our preschoolers have done throughout the year. Uh, Colette Maple is going to talk to us today about Creation Care. Earth Day is coming up soon. Colette, I'm going to try and put this. I think you're probably going to want this stand, so let me know if I can fix this for you. I have props. <laughs> you have props, that's right. All right, maybe. Now, is it going to fall is my concern. Let's see if that works. Try talking like this. Hello? Hello? Many are your works, O Lord, and wisdom you made them all. All the earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, kingly creatures beyond number, living the things both large and small. You probably noticed from the front of your bulletin that we're kind of like creation care for Day evening service today. Um, and so that's why I want to come and talk to you a little bit about who is our creation care team. But first, um, my question is. When was the first Earth Day? Do you remember what year? 1970. 1970. Yeah. Okay. Why? Um, why? What's the day? The day of. talk a little bit about the creation care team. Oh, I forgot my joke. <laughs> it's Humor Sunday, I was told. Um, what's the name of Tom Cruise's new eco-thriller? What kind of film do you want to see? Mission Compostable. <laughs> September, and we now have eight um, energetic and enthusiastic members. One of our goals is to help raise environmental awareness and responsibility and responsibilities through education to all levels, from kids all the way to adults. We have already started giving programs to groups throughout the church. I've given a couple to um, women's circles, 
And if you'd like to program for your group, just please contact me or Michael, and we'll get one for you. We're also exploring ways, more ways to make the church more environmentally friendly, using energy surveys, analyzing utility programs, and adopting the NCP Green Chief Church <coughs> Initiatives Program. And the third thing that we are working on is with community involvement. And in fact, next Saturday, um, Centenary is one of the sponsors for Faith Connections, Earth Day at the Park at Martin Marietta Park. It starts at 1 o'clock with the new boardroom. It is really important to realize that we can all make a difference by just making little changes. I know some people get overwhelmed when you say you need to change your life to become more environmentally friendly. And there are um, some things that have been happening in the church in the last year. Many Sunday school classes now have members bring their coffee mugs to class. We have more recycling bins. And the Methodist men, I was told, use plates, I mean real plates and real utensils instead of paper last um, Monday. So if you'd like to um, join our Creation Care team, please let me or Pastor Michael know. Um, this, this is my prop. I, <laughs> I, could, I could have driven like 500 plants. I bought 300 um, for the church today. So I'm going to kind of ask you, and I, I know he looks kind of pitiful, but he, I was a bad, bad plant mama last weekend, and he, they got left out to tomatoes. So all you have to do, he stood, just bring up here, just plant him real deeply, and he'll be good. So, um, and so if you are going to this service, if you're at this service, and are leaving at the church after this service, you can go to the library and pick up a plant. If you are going to one of the Sunday school classes to pick up a plan, up, up. if you're going up to the, the Second Floor of the Education Building, you can pick up a plan after the Sunday school class there, and there will be plants in the library. And if, down, if you happen to go to the Alder State class, there are those plants down there. And also, I left, I put bags down there, which if, I'm hoping everybody will do them, because I was told that if anybody brought things up to this service, I get to go pick it up. <laughs> so, 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 so. And Michael, Michael and I are going to have to bring the food. Anyway, I'd like to close with a quote from my, one of my favorite naturalists, Sir David Attenborough. The truth is the natural world is changing and we are all totally dependent on that world. It provides our food, water, and air. It is one of the most precious things we have and we need to defend it. As a congregation, let's make this journey into creation care together, one step at a time. God bless you all. Thank you. Friends, may you be blessed today by the beauty of the earth, by the beauty of our church, and by the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now we have a video prayer for our opening prayer.
kind of sharing today with a celebration. Mike and Linda Jones celebrated their 54th wedding anniversary last week, so congratulations to them. Are there other joys and celebrations today? Harold Harvey was back at the 8.30 service this morning after having had his gallbladder removed and some other problems. He's back on the mend and is back with us, so we praise God for his recovery. Any others? Now let's lift up some concerns. Please pray for Ruth Waters. Ruth broke her leg last Sunday afternoon. Uh, did not fall. It just broke and uh, has had to have a rod, a stainless steel rod put in her leg. She is at uh, the rehab unit at the hospital. So we'll be there for a while. Uh, Irma Becker apparently fell early this morning and broke her collarbone there in Virginia. So Richard asked for prayers for Irma. They're trying to figure out what they're going to do. At the very least, she's going to be in a sling, but they believe that that's all that they're dealing with right now. Also, the family of James Padgett. I don't know if any of you knew James. He was 97 years old. He joined Centenary a couple of years ago. He passed away last week, and his uh, service was at Viridian down in Carolina Colors, so prayers for James' family. Any other concerns today you want to lift up? Get our hearts ready then to go to the Lord. created the universe by your eternal word, and you have blessed humankind by making us stewards of the earth. We pray for your world, that we might share and conserve its resources, that we might live in reverence for your creation, that we might live in harmony with each other. You have given us a rich world, and yet too often we have through our lack of respect for creation and our lack of love for each other, too often we've made this a world of suffering and sorrow. We pray today for those who carry a burden of pain in their life right now, from whatever cause, that they may come to enjoy renewed wholeness. And God, we pray that in whatever way that we can, you would point us in the direction of helping. We lift up those persons whose names we call aloud. We pray for Ruth. We pray for Irma. We pray for Mr. Padgett's family. We pray for all of those concerns that we keep in the silent sanctuary of our hearts. We ask your blessings upon them. Father, in your son Jesus, you've called us to a new way of life, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Help us to treat with care and respect this world as we live in hope and in anticipation of the world to come. When your kingdom will come and your will will be done. We thank you today for those people, both living in this world and in the next, who have shown a true reverence for your creation. Help us to follow in their footsteps until along with them we meet you face to face. For everything is made new in Christ our Lord. Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let me offer a prayer for our offering today as we come to a time of sharing with what God has given us. Let us pray. Lord, as we lay before you our tithes and offerings, we give you all that we are and everything that you've entrusted to us. Come and bless these gifts for the sake of your kingdom and your glory. In Christ's name, amen.
would like to come down to the front now for a little time together, come on down. Good morning. Hey, Brent. A lot of pressure on us. Uh, we'll, we'll make them do the talks. How are you? Okay. I'm going to call the marigold. So, Earth Day is coming up next Saturday, and we just learned the history of it, which is very helpful. I didn't know that. Um, but God created heaven and earth. And do you know what he said when he created it? He said it was good. Good. See, that's how we're going to put them on the spot, not us. We have to make sure they know the answers. So he said that heaven and earth was good, and his creation was good. And guess what? You're a part of the creation. And I am, and that marigold. And uh, because we are part of the creation, we are good. We are good. Um, and also in Genesis, God said to man um, that we were to... Um, till the earth and that we were to keep it. And I think when he said that, he was asking us to be good stewards of this beautiful earth. And so what we need to do is kind of think about how to be good stewards and be good stewards of my marigold, which is now your marigold. Um, and we have been told that we cannot get dirt in this sanctuary, so it's a lot of pressure. Um, but that is what Earth Day is for, for me at least. It's a reminder that we are to be good stewards of this beautiful planet. How does that sound? Yeah, it sounds, it sounds good. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a brief prayer. Ready? Lord, thank you for this opportunity to praise you for the goodness of your creation. Help us to be good stewards to this beautiful world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 first reading this morning is from Genesis in the beginning, the first chapter, the 28th verse through second chapter, the fourth verse. God blessed them and God said to them, be faithful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves along the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is good that is, that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to the, every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has, that has the breath of life, I have given every tree, every green plant, for a food. And so it was. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good, and it was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on God, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Our second reading, if you would please stand for the reading of our, uh, our second reading, Genesis 9, 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth, with you as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said this, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between you, me and you, and every living creature that is with you, and all the future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again be a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the heavens, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Good morning. Good morning. 
I've got to, I've got to say, Pastor Van set me up last week. My, my whole point of this morning was going to come in and talk about creation care and some of the amazing things that we can do as a community. But then he had to say this Sunday is Holy Humor Sunday. <laughs> I just want to say I'm not responsible for any of these jokes. <laughs> A little girl came up to her mother and said, Mom, where did we come from? Where did humans come from? And she said, well, sweetie, God made Adam and Eve. And they began to have children. And then, and then they had children. And that is how humanity was created. And that's how eventually you came to be. A couple of days later, the girl went up to her father and said, Dad, how did we get here? And he, his answer was a little different. He said, many years ago, there were monkeys, and these monkeys created the human race, and we evolved into the human race from the monkeys. The girl was incredibly confused at this point. And so she went up to her mom. She said, Mom, I came to you the other day, and you told me that we were created from Adam and Eve and from their descendants. Well, I talked to Dad about the same thing. And he said that, that we came from monkeys. So I don't understand. So she said, well, honey, I'm going to tell you about my side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> A good joke is fun to tell. It's fun to hear. It's fun to pass on. Happiness is infectious and joy travels quickly. Today is Holy Humor Sunday, a day where we can talk serious, but hopefully weave in a couple of jokes here and there and have a giggle or two amongst us this morning. Over and over the scriptures tell us to rejoice, to praise, and to laugh. All those emotions that have to do with, with us enjoying a full and fruitful relationship with God. Okay, one more before we get started. <clears throat> a woman invited some folks over to dinner and um, as they set the table all the dinner party came around the table. Everyone sat down, and the mother looked over to her six-year-old daughter and said, Sweetie, would you say a prayer? And she said, Mommy, I'm not sure that I know what to say. And she says, Well, just say what you hear Mommy say. And so the little girl bowed her head, and she said, Dear Lord, why on earth did I invite all these people to dinner? <laughs> More seriously, as Colette came in and shared with us this morning, uh, in addition to being Holy Humor Sunday, this is also the Sunday before Earth Day, April 22nd, when people around the country recommit themselves to restoring the planet that we call home. As we reflect on everything that God has given us, creation is the one gift that we have a continual responsibility to have dominion over, to watch over, to care for. But as we reflect on all of these things, we sometimes forget or we don't realize and treat our resources like they are those type of gifts. But at the end of the day, creation care is a responsibility of all of God's children, and it covers a wide range of concerns. It factors in all facets of our lives. And yet, often we find it difficult to talk about. Sometimes more difficult to act on even. Caring for creation can be difficult in our world that celebrates modern innovation and modernism. Why can't we go there in conversations? Often it seems too taboo. Sometimes it seems like it's too political. On one extreme, Got folks yelling these apocalyptic end of time notions. The world's burning. The world's going to crash and fall. And on the other side, we have folks saying environment, environmentalism, shibnarism. What is that anyway? It's nothing. But creation care is so much more than simply just recycling or doing a good job of conserving water. Those are simple things that I imagine most of us here do pretty regularly and well anyway. As 
we create more and more technology now, we also create more waste, more energy consumption, more pollution. We find ourselves monopolizing the habitats of other living creatures. For us, with more technology comes greater responsibility. From the technology on your desk to the one you hold in your hand, and so much more. Friends, in the beginning, God created everything. From the algae in the sea to the planets and the galaxies from your favorite pet to an ornery alligator, from every complete stranger to your very best friends, everything that has ever been made or that we will ever see was created a long, long time ago. And not only that, we read that everything that God created was pleasing to God. God was happy. God called it. God had created a masterpiece, and we get to live in this beautiful masterpiece and enjoy it. From the juicy summer watermelon and the sweet smell of spring lilacs, God gave us sunrise and sunset for order. God gave us one another for companionship, and God created animals in every living thing Treated, to be treated with dignity and per for preservation. And water and food, those were created to give us sustenance and all living things sustenance, to give them energy to survive and thrive. There's a Native, pro uh, Native American proverb that I want to share with you this morning that I came across that I thought really hit the spot. Treat the earth well. It was not given to you by your parents. It was loaned to you by your children. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. That's a pretty poignant reminder. God is the master creator for certain. And we just look around when we walk outside, we can see the painted masterpiece. And sure, we we create all new things. We start with Play-Doh when we're kids, and we put the computers together or other things together as we grow older. But God's design, the original design, is where it all came from. And so, we should care. We do have a dog in this life. Hear God's own words that illustrate how we caring for creation is. In the 20th chapter of Deuteronomy, God instructs soldiers not to damage the fruit trees when they're attacking an enemy city. God said, those are my trees. I gave them to you so that you could eat from them. Whatever skirmishes you're having down there, it isn't the fruit tree's fault. If you want to rough up each other, that's one thing, but don't mess with my trees. Proverbs 12.10, God instructs those of us who own animals to treat them with respect, saying those who are righteous treat their animals humanely, but the compassion of the wicked is really inhumane. Cherishing and protecting the natural world is not just an add-on, sideline kind of hobby for a few Christians who call themselves environmental. In fact, protecting the earth that God entrusted to our care is central to our Christianity. It's a faithful response to being stewards and carriers. Prophets and sages throughout the Bible urge us to participate with God in creating a loving community where people and the land live together in balance and in harmony, in shalom, in wholeness, in peace. Mystic every faith tradition tell us that human beings are not separated from the rest of the created order, but we're siblings of the walls, of the water, of the porcupine, and the pine tree. All of us, every living being, every element of the natural world created and cherished by the same 
name of Almighty God. Today, Christians and people of many faiths are rising up to call for an end to new fossil fuel projects and a rapid, just transition to a sustainable future. Some of you are composting and planting community gardens, pollinator gardens, and good use gardens, those gardens that are designed to others that are in need. Some of you are supporting local land trusts to protect forest and farmland. Some of you are fighting to make clean energy accessible to low-income communities. Some of you have joined campaigns to push the four biggest banks who finance fossil fuels, I won't name them, and um, to quit propping up the oil and gas industry. While others of you are incorporating solar power for your homes and looking searching for vehicles that require no gasoline or, or less gasoline. We're done with hunt, huddling and committing. Whenever the crucified and risen Christ draws near and opens the closed doors of our minds and hearts, as he does today and every day, we hope to breathe in that love, to receive his forgiveness, to honor his wounds, and to find our place spirit-filled justice-seeking movement to protect all things that are entrusted to our care from God above. Our purpose is to live every moment of our lives with a very keen awareness of God's abundant generosity. It's to remember how much God loves you and how much God loves everything that's alive. Praise God. One more funny before we end. God is talking to one of the angels and says, do you know what I've just done? He said, I've just created a 24-hour period of alternating light and darkness. Isn't that good? The angel said, yes, but what will you do now? He said, I think I'll call it a good day. <laughs> Friends, rejoice and sing all around the earth. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Why don't we stand together and let's sing and worship some more.
those around us and pass the peace of Christ. And then we'll huddle up and make a big circle around the people. me in our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today at Centenary United Methodist Church. If you'd like to know more about Centenary, go to www.centenarychurch.com. If you'd like to speak to me or another staff member, you can reach us at 252-637-4181. Or if you'd like to visit us, come to 309 New Street in beautiful Newburn, North Carolina. God bless you, and remember, God loves you.